It's the dream of every 3D printing enthusiast. You see something in the physical world, scan it in seconds, and print it out in an exact replica on your 3D printer, just like that. Up until recently, this has only been possible with commercial scanners that cost tens of thousands of dollars and tons of training to use properly. These days, all of that is changing. And just like 3D printers have become more and more available to consumers, we're also seeing the first wave of consumer-grade 3D scanners hit the market. But are they any good? I tested three different solutions for at-home scanning, and in this video, I'm going to compare them all and tell you which one is the best. Oh, and stick around to the end because I'll also answer the question that's on everyone's mind. Should you get a 3D scanner? Let's dive in. The Contenders. First things first, lady and gentlemen, but if you look at my YouTube analytics, it's more like lady and gentlemen. Let me present our three contenders for the evening. In the left corner, weighing in at a healthy 500 grams, the Creality CR Scan Lizard. Now, I got this scanner by backing the Kickstarter campaign and then waiting and waiting like forever, but we'll get into all of that a little bit later. It boasts 0.05 millimeter accuracy, the ability to scan black objects, markerless scanning, easy to use software, but can it live up to the hype? No, but we're still gonna talk about it. And in the right corner, weighing in at a lightweight 160 grams, the Revo Point Mini. I originally discovered this scanner and company at Formnext in Frankfurt, and I was blown away by the quality of the scans that they were showing off in their booth. Now, after a few months of back and forth emails, RevoPoint agreed to send me this unit free of charge for review. However, no money changed hands. While you could say that this makes me biased in favor of the RevoPoint, you could also say that I would be biased towards the Creality because I would want to make myself feel like my money has been well spent. I also like to think that I'm sent enough gear for review from enough different companies that I have no real incentive to give one preferential treatment over another, besides, of course, my actual experiences with their products. Anyways, the Revo Point Mini boasts 0.02 millimeter accuracy, industrial blue light, high speed scanning, a lightweight and convenient form factor, and much, much more. Oh my God, Jim, what's this bursting in over the side ropes? We have the iPhone 14 Pro Max with polycam installed. I can't believe it. No, this isn't a 3D scanner, but with the recent advancements in mobile phones and LiDAR and photogrammetry, you just know that we had to test it out and compare it. The iPhone 14 Pro Max boasts not being another device collecting dust on your shelves, patented you already own it technology, the always in your pocket user experience, and unlike all of the other contenders on this list, it is fully wireless, has a battery, and is internet connected, and it doesn't require a computer to use it. By the way, I'm sure that there are Android phones as well with LiDAR where you could use Polycam, but I don't use Android and I don't own any of them, so I'm just gonna use the term iPhone interchangeably here with Polycam, so deal with it. You can tell me nicely in the comments how wrong I am below. And now, let's get ready to scan some stuff. Let's, let's just scan some stuff. So as we just mentioned, it's going to be pretty hard to beat your iPhone when it comes to convenience. You know it, you love it, let's not waste any time on it. Instead, let's focus on these two scanners. When you first plug them in, a few things are going to stand out at you right away. First of all, the Creality scanner not only requires a USB cable, but also a separate power cable, which is annoying. And then once you plug it in, you'll immediately notice the extremely loud and obnoxious cooling fan. It's also heavy and I wouldn't want to get stuck carrying it around all day in this massive suitcase that they provide. Compare this with the Revo Point Mini, which not only has just one cable that goes into the computer, but also makes no noise whatsoever. 
It has a tiny form factor, a little bit bigger than a harmonica, and it will fit nicely into your pocket, even with the included tripod and cable. Heck, you can even break down the turntable into five different pieces and put that in your pocket as well. There's also a super convenient button right on the back that you can use to start your scan, even though the software makes that pretty easy as well. The winner of this round with one point, the Revo Point Mini. While on the surface, you might be thinking that the software isn't a big deal, the reality is, at least in my experience, that the software is much more important than the actual hardware. That's because it doesn't actually matter how good the hardware is at picking up the actual points if the software doesn't do a good enough job at aligning them, or if it's so frustrating to use the software that you'd rather just give up altogether. And this is where we come to the first major issue with the CR Scan Lizard. You see, when Creality originally launched the Kickstarter campaign for this product, it was intended to ship with a totally different piece of software. And from the limited time that I did have to play with it, it seemed to be half decent with auto noise removal, auto alignment, and things like that. You can actually even still see screenshots of it on their website. But then before the units even shipped, another company actually claimed that this software infringed on their IP, which not only caused Creality to delay shipment for months and months, but also means that today they require you to use their CR Studio 2 app. I'll be honest with you guys, I struggled for months to get this thing and the software to play nicely. I needed to get some profile files from Creality and then it was choosing the wrong camera to scan, and then even on the rare occasions that it did work, it just wasn't intuitive or fun to use at all. Which mode do I need? Points or faces? What's with this wavelength on the side? Am I supposed to center it or try to get it to go all the way to one direction? Don't get me wrong, it looks amazing. It's just that it sucks. Scans don't align properly, there's no clear tooltips, there isn't nearly enough documentation explaining the different features online. Compare this with the Revo Scan software that comes with the Revo Point Mini, which although extremely simplistic and not abundantly pretty, just works. There are no funky menus or tabs of different scanning modes that I don't understand. There is manual and auto for brightness and depth and a button to start scanning, pause, or stop scanning. A simple slider tells me if I'm too far or too close and it automatically fuses all of my scans as soon as I complete them with a shocking level of accuracy. In my testing, RevoScan didn't even need me to pre-scan the turntable or remove it manually in the software at all, despite the fact that I accidentally covered it in sublimation spray which we'll get into in just a second. My only real criticism of the Revo Scan software is that while it does get the alignments right, it takes quite some time to actually do it. I would venture to guess that this is because they probably aren't yet optimized for Apple Silicon because I'm running a top of the line M1 Max processor on my MacBook Pro with silly fast graphics capabilities and there's no reason that anything, even heavy 3D files, should take multiple minutes to process like this. Finally, let's talk about the iPhone because of course, it's really hard to beat the user experience of an iPhone app. And indeed, the Polycam app is super simple to use. You just select if you're scanning a room, a photo, or using LiDAR, and then choose whether you wanna do it with video or photos. One thing that I loved about the Polycam app is that it actually gives you haptic feedback as you scan new parts of the model, kind of like when you first train your iPhone for Face ID so that you know, even if you don't actually see the screen, that you are doing a good job and scanning well. Polycam also has the added benefit of already being connected to a web device, making it extremely easy to share your scans with the click of a button to any app that you happen to have on your iPhone. Now, I'm not sure if Polycam processes in the cloud or on the device for the free trial version, because you do need to keep the app open while it processes, and while it said that it would finish in only 110 seconds, I don't actually know how long it took because I had to quit the app after 20 minutes, and when I went back into the app, I noticed that it had already processed, it just hadn't updated. The winner of this round with one point, 
Polycam. Though, Jim, I gotta say, I'm really not sure that the guy who bursts into the ring and isn't even part of the match is eligible to earn points. Back to you. Hey there, one quick second, we're gonna get right back into today's video, but before we do, I have to thank this video's sponsor, which I'm really excited about, and that is Onshape. I've recently switched to Onshape from Blender, and I'm planning to do a whole video all about that. But in the meantime, let me just tell you a couple quick reasons why I love Onshape. Number one, first and foremost, no matter where I am in the world, because Onshape is fully cloud-based and works like Google Docs, if I have a great idea for upgrading my designs or even designing a new thing, I can just pop it open on my iPhone and it works. Even in one of the deepest craters on the entire planet, it actually works, which is crazy to me. The other reason I really love Onshape, besides the fact that it's super easy to use, is that unlike a lot of the other CAD companies out there, Onshape has no intention of never making money off creators. They just want to support the creator community. And for them, the entire purpose of their business is just to sell to other businesses. They're happy to give us access to the software completely for free now and forever. And they've assured me that unlike some of those other free CAD companies out there, that is something that's never going to change with them. So to check out Onshape in anticipation of the video I'm going to do pretty soon on why I've switched to it, and support this channel, just go ahead and hit the link below. Doing so really helps out this channel. And also, I think you're just really gonna enjoy Onshape like I do. Anyway, let's get back to today's video. Here we go. We're going to get into the scan results and conclusions in just a moment, but let's first talk about the prices. When I bought the CR Scan Lizard, I got a special Kickstarter price with the turntable for about 450 US shipped. Now that the Kickstarter is over, you're looking to pay around $600 for it. Now that might seem like a lot, but coming from thousands of dollars for commercial scanners, it's actually not that bad at all. And it puts this product firmly in the consumer range. As for the Revo Point Mini, it currently retails for $799. At a third more expensive than the CR Scan Lizard, that might put it out of range for your average consumer, but I'll discuss why that might or might not be flawed thinking when we get into the conclusion section. Finally, we have the iPhone and Polycam combo. And while on the one hand, you could argue that this option costs really only $799 a month for one user with export privileges, if you already have an iPhone with LiDAR on it, I actually think it's fairer to say that it costs around $200, which is the difference between the iPhone 14 Pro versus the iPhone 14 without the LiDAR. The winner of this round by technicality with one point is Polycam, but only by technicality. For our main contenders, it's definitely going to be the CR scan on price. All right, let's now talk about what matters the most. How well do they actually scan? I compared these scanners on a variety of different models, and while my tests were not fully comprehensive, I ranged from extremely challenging black electronic devices to relatively simple, brightly colored toys and models. With both of the dedicated scanners, despite what Creality may advertise on their website, I found that proper sublimating spray, like this bottle that I was given by ABX at Formnext, or even just dry shampoo, was an absolute must. First, let's start out with a CR Scan Lizard. I'm gonna put it bluntly, I hate this piece of junk. Although Creality's support was, as always, friendly and mostly helpful, I actually put off this review for months because I didn't want to deal with the hassle of using this product. I'm not sure if it's the hardware or the software that comes with it now that Creality has had legal troubles, but they come as a package, and I don't see any third-party alternatives available. So unlike with 3D printers, the included software is a really make-or-break part of the experience. And this software reminds me of the sulfur pits of Yellowstone Park. Truly beautiful and colorful, but when you actually get in and try to use it, it stinks and you really don't want to go back. Honestly, I have neither the time nor the patience to spend any more hours of my life trying to get a decent, printable model out of this thing. So if you were hoping for me to do some kind of test of dimensional accuracy where I print out different models, yeah, it's not going to happen. Up next, let's check out what Polycam had to offer. 
While it does get points for effort, the Polycam scan has the major disadvantage of including everything that the LiDAR captured, meaning that I would need to manually go in and remove the surface that I actually filmed on in a software like Maya or Blender. But if I were going to spend the time doing that, then I could probably just go into CAD and model the stuff myself. And that's only the beginning because the Polycam scan also is significantly lower quality with jagged curves, warped surfaces, and much less fine detail than the other scans. In the end, Polycam's model reminds me of my two-year-old's daycare drawings. They're nice and all, and I really want to encourage them, but at the end of the day, I really have no use for them. Finally, let's talk about the most expensive option on the list, the Revo Point Mini. As I said before, I figured out after many rounds of testing that sublimating spray was, as Revo Point makes clear on their website, an absolute must for darker objects. So once I applied it, did the Revo Point Mini actually deliver? Yeah, I'm actually a little bit shocked to admit it after my experience with the CR scan and the long saga I had with it, but after doing four or five scans of a complicated camera, I had a half decent rough draft. And while I could have done a few more scans and slathered on some more sublimating spray, I was starting to worry that I would never find my camera under all of it. So instead, I opted to take the opportunity to test out the auto mesh and fill holes features of the software. And to my surprise, the resulting model was really good. Good enough that I'm actually going to use it for an upcoming project where I print my very own camera accessories. So stay tuned for that. Strictly by using the auto brightness and auto depth features with no manual tweaking, I was actually able to reproduce my success on a wide range of objects, including silk PLA with lots of details and a few more that you probably don't wanna see on video. No, not that, you perverts. I'm talking about my dental guard. Jeez. Jim, I think it's pretty clear that all in all, we have a knockout in the fourth round. And while I don't understand the rules of boxing at all, I'm pretty sure that if one person gets knocked out, none of the points up until that point matter at all. The winner by knockout, the Revo Point Mini. With the fight now over and our champion chilling out in the locker room, let me now do what all TV commentators do and give my opinion on something I know very little about to keep you, the viewer, watching for ad revenue. Jim, I think the question on everybody's mind tonight is this. Should you buy a 3D scanner for 3D printing? Given the fact that the only usable option on this list is really the $799 Revo Point Mini, I'm going to have to say that for the average hobbyist, the answer is no. With things like Onshape being free for consumer use and millions and millions of models available on sites like Printables, Thangs, and GrabCAD, the reality is that for everything but the most complicated or personalized of objects, you can either download readily available models or just create your own for free. And what's more, doing so is a valuable learning experience that will really serve you as you go about creating more models for 3D printing. With that said, your time is valuable and modeling something complicated that you can't find online from scratch can take a full day of work. Plus, I can easily think of a number of things that would basically pay for the entire cost of this scanner if you needed them. My dad, for example, has these custom orthotics in his shoes, which are made of polycarbonate and they need replacing every few years, and they cost like $250 a pair. If I use this scanner to scan his existing ones and then produce new ones for him for pennies for three different pairs of his shoes, well then I've pretty much paid for the entire cost of the scanner. And the same is true of a lot of little projects around the house. At the same time, $799 is a lot of money. And I remember feeling that even the $450 that I spent on this CR scan lizard was a bit of a frivolous expense. So while I really, really like the Revo Point Mini as someone who works in 3D printing for a living now, and I probably could even justify paying the $799 price tag for it just for enhancing my projects on this channel, I have to be honest and admit that I don't think that I could justify paying the price for this product for just casual at-home use. 
Don't get me wrong, it's a great value. But something tells me that like every other piece of technology that shifts from industry to consumer grade, this is only the beginning for 3D scanners. And we're going to see the prices of them really come down over the next five years or so. I don't think we're that far away from the point where a scanner just like this really will be a negligible expense of $200 to $400, much like many of the high quality entry level 3D printers that we're seeing today. The bottom line, if you have a specific use case right now and you regularly need to scan things that you can't find online, the Revo Point Mini is an awesome product at an incredible price. The CR Scan Lizard, not so much. For the casual enthusiasts and everyone else, I think it's worth waiting a few years just to see where prices land. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and leaving your comments below. Live, 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 hit the subscribe button for more content. And a special and heartfelt thank you to my Patreon supporters who are helping me turn this into a full-time job that I'm really passionate about. That's all for now, but I'll see all of you on the next layer. Live on pay-per-view, Jonathan Levy makes an ass of himself. How the hell am I going to get all this stuff out of my hair?